In this video, we're going to take a look at the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem is one of the most important and interesting discoveries in statistics. Essentially what it says is if certain requirements are met that we'll talk about later, then the sampling distribution of either the mean or proportion of samples will approach the normal model. So before we talk about what that means, what I'm talking about is I'm finding the mean or average or the proportion of a sample of a certain amount of objects. For instance, if I just have one die, I can roll that die as many times as I want. And what I expect to have happen is to get a one, one sixth of the time, and a two, one sixth of the time, and a three, one sixth of the time, and so on. And notice I can have as many tosses as I want, and I'm still going to expect that. Now, if instead I roll three die, and then I find the average of those three die, this is no longer a uniform distribution. And it makes sense if we think about the probabilities. So let's say if I wanted to have an average, remember we're finding the average. If my average was one or something close to one, the only way that I can get a one is to roll a one and a one and a one. So a one on all three die. But to roll an average of two, I could have a one and a three and a two. I could have a two and a two and a two. I could have a one, a one, and a four, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of different ways that I can get an average of two. And it's, of course, I could also get an average of 1.5 or 1.75 and so on. And so as we can see, this curve now looks not uniform, but a little bit more bell-shaped. And if instead I look at taking 20 die and then finding the average value of 20 die, we can see that this is becoming more and more normal and it's going to end up with a unimodal distribution and this is going to be 3.5 because that is the average that we would expect um, for the value of our die. I said previously that certain requirements have to be met, and we're going to look a little bit at requirements right now, um, but really once we look at specific situations, for instance, a means question where sigma is known or where sigma is unknown or a proportions question, we'll talk about those restrictions or requirements um, in detail for each of those distributions. But for now, we're just going to focus on a general idea for means, and that is that either the sample size has to be at least 30, or the population is normally distributed. So what that means is when we were looking at the die, remember it looked something like this, where we basically had six bars for the population. Well, in that case, the population had a uniform distribution. And so I couldn't say that it was normally distributed. Um, so that means my sample size would have to be at least 30 for me to use the central limit theorem. So the examples that I showed you wouldn't quite be there yet. So recall when we had three die, so our sample size was three die, it looked more normal. And then the sample size with 20 die looked more normal. So they're saying you have to have at least 30 for the uh, sample size to be normal enough to be able to use the central limit theorem. And the central limit theorem says three things. It says that the shape is going to be normal, which is super important. And of course, the greater the size of N, the greater the sample size, the better the normal distribution approximation will be. And that we can describe that normal distribution with a mean that is equal to the mean of the population and with a standard deviation that is equal to the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. So let's take a look at an example. Here we have a histogram that represents the population distribution. And again, keyword here is population distribution of the weights of 600 horse jockeys. 
The mean of the population is 116.2 pounds, and the standard deviation, again, of the population is 3.9 pounds. So now we're going to look at what would happen if we took samples of 45 horse jockeys at a time and found the average weight of the 45 horse jockeys. So the first question is, can we use the central limit theorem? And if so, why? Well, remember there were two um, different ways that we could say we could use the central limit theorem. The first was the population uh, was a normal distribution. So as we can see, the population here is not a normal distribution. We have a definite skew here. This is skewed to the right because it's skewed in the direction of the tail. So this is not a normal distribution. However, a sample size of 45 is obviously greater than or equal to 30. And so yes, we can use the central limit theorem because n is greater than or equal to 30. What is the sampling distribution's mean? So what is mean of our sampling distribution? Well, it's the exact same as the mean of our population, 116.2. What is the sampling distribution's standard deviation? Well, remember, it's not exactly the same as the standard deviation. It's the standard deviation of our population divided by the square root of n. So I'm going to take 3.9 and divide it by the square root of 45, and that gives me about 0.581. And then what is the sampling distribution's shape? So again, the population shape is skewed right, but the sampling distribution shape is going to be nearly normal. And again, that is the beauty of the central limit theorem. As we can see, if I did create a histogram using the sampling distribution of the sample means for samples of size 45, now I've got a nearly normal distribution. I have one last question for you to try, and this is really just making sure you understand the basics before we really look at the math involved with means and proportions using the central limit theorem. So if you're ready, press pause, try this question, and then press play to see how you did. So we have a graph that displays the starting salaries for law school graduates entering the workforce in 2007. And the first question says, what is the shape of the distribution? And it's kind of crazy, but really I could say that this is bimodal because I have one mode here and one mode here. So that's the shape of the distribution. Question B says, if we're looking at the sampling distribution of the sample means created from this population for samples of size 25, can I use the central limit theorem? And the answer hopefully is of course, no. Remember that the requirement was either that this, which is the population is nearly normal or that N is greater than or equal to 30. So that is not the case for B. So no, I cannot use the central limit theorem. Okay, what about if I had a sample of size 50? Now can I use it? Yes, I can, because now it meets that requirement that 50 is greater than or equal to 30. And then of course for 200, you bet that also is greater than or equal to 30. And then it says, what would you expect the shape of this distribution to be and how would it compare to the shape of the distribution in C. Well, for both C and D, I would expect a normal distribution. And how would it compare? Because N is greater, then I would say that it's going to be uh, more nearly normal than the distribution in C. Now that we have a basic idea about the central limit theorem, let's take a look at what that means, um, in particular, when we're dealing with means or averages.